Hi, welcome to the second video in the series uh, on the 505. Today we'll be looking at the pre-flight inspection. First item to check is all of your lights. We can see the taxi lights and the landing lights are working on this aircraft. All the bulbs on the 505 are LED. There's no filament bulb, so you get a much brighter light and the bulbs last longer. You can see the anti-coal light and the stab light are working. I have checked the port side and the rear already, so we know that they're all good to go. Next item to check is general state of the front of the aircraft, in particular to the windscreens. Are they clean? Have we got lots of insects washed on them? Uh, particularly with hangar rash or anything that may have happened on the last flight. You can see on this 505 the screens are beautiful. Moving down we check the general nose area, we check the fresh air vent which is here. All we're looking for on this is anything that may have got trapped or blocked up some of the vents. While we're here we have a quick look at the cross tube, the, the forward cross tube, just to make sure everything is the, in the right shape. Moving forward to the pitot head, we're checking integrity and we're having a look down the end to see if there's anything insect wise that's got down there and blocking it, which will give you spurious readings. We then move to the static and we're checking for this hole in the centre that it's clear, which we can see on this one it is. While we're down here, we have a look down the skid tube just to check that it's straight and true, and nothing happened on the last previous flight. Moving up, we check the door hinges and it's the integrity of the hinge to the door plus the hardware that secures the door to the airframe. So we can see on this one the pins are in on both the top and the bottom. Looking at the perspex, we check for condition and also the sliding window that it's its integrity as it should be. Next item to check is this window. We're checking for security, cleanliness and that there's no hangar damage from the sawing in the hangar. Moving rearwards, as we've said previously, there's very few panels to open on this aircraft for the pre-flight and you don't need to break into any oil system. The next item we're going to check is the transmission oil level. It's through this window here, you will need a torch to do this. And as you can see from the inset, the oil level is perfect. Next item to check is the rotor head and the main rotor blades. On the way up, we're going to look at the hydraulic oil, which is seen through this grill here, which you can see in the inset is at the correct level. And I'll just show you now how to climb up. You can use steps, but the aircraft is designed for you to climb up the side. There's a pin in the boot, which secures the door open. Obviously, if you're outside, the wind's blowing, it could blow the door closed, and then you're stuck on top of the aircraft, which is not good. So we have a handhold here, a handhold here, two foot places here, another one on the lower cross, uh, cross tube and it is designed for you to stand on the boot floor. There's no damage that will happen through that. So we'll show you how you climb up. Always hold the mast when you climb up, not the pitch links because the pitch links are designed for vertical load, not horizontal. Okay, here we are at the top. So first thing we check is the head nut. There is a claw here. We just check that it is in its locked position, which it is. We check the droop restraints. You're just checking that they're free to move, which they are. A good visual down each main rotor blade. Again, you're looking for clean blades, any damage that may have occurred on the last flight. Bird strikes again, hangar rash, those kind of things. When we're happy with those, we check the blade bolts on both sides. We check the latch bolts on both sides. We check the general condition of the grips, which look fine. We check the yoke and the trunnion here and the retaining bolts, that all the witness marks are good, which you can see from here. When we're happy with the general condition of the head, we move to the pitch links to check for wear. Now when you check for wear, you want to do slow, small movements. There's no good really pulling things around, you'll feel more if you're very delicate with it. So you're just looking for any play. This aircraft is relatively brand new, so we wouldn't expect to find anywhere at the moment. Moving down the mast, we check the swashplate boot here. We're looking for any, any rips or tears or splits, and that it's still secured to the top of the swashplate. 
We have a look at the swash plate link. We check for wear. Again, just two fingers, small movement is all you need. We have a good look around the swash plate area, the rotating part and the non-rotating part. We're looking for any chafing, any wear, anything that's moved, any bolts that have moved. Again, this all looks absolutely superb. Moving forward, we check the hydraulic reservoir, which is here. We've already checked the oil level coming up through the side vent, but we'll have a good look for any kind of leaks. Moving forward, we check the three servos for the aircraft. We're looking for any kind of leaks or any kind of chafing on the, on the lines. Moving rearwards on the links, we check again for any kind of wear, any binding, any kind of leakage. We look down the bottom of the transmission area to check if there's anything that's got in the aircraft. Birds do like to nest in very warm transmissions after flights. We check the top level of the transmission area. We're looking for any kind of oil misting around this area. We check the cap is secure on the top of the transmission, which is just down through here. Next item to check are the two live mounts. There's one on either side. The live mounts are what give the 505 its really smooth flight characteristic. Live mounts are also fitted on the 407 and the 429, so you're getting some really good tech on this aircraft. Moving rearwards to the back of the, oil, the transmission is the oil filter. The insets just come up to show you this pop-up filter here. If your filter is blocking, the pin will fire. You'll see a red leg. That means the, the oil is bypassing. Behind that, we have our engine fuel tank, oil tank. There is a sight glass on the side of here, and you will notice from the inset that's just popped up that it shows the sight glass is empty. On the 505, you check the oil up to 15 minutes post-flight. If you check it after that, oil can drain down to the bottom of the engine, and it will look like you've got no oil, but you actually have, so don't top up. It's always post-flight up to 15 minutes. Moving down to the back of the transmission area, we have the K-Flex drive shaft, which is a huge improvement over the old 206 drive shaft. K-Flex is a series of plates, so you want to be checking each plate for any kind of dust or fretting or cracks, and that all of the hardware is still uh, all secure with the wax lines exactly as they should be. We're again checking for any pipes that may be touching or chafing or any kind of leaks uh, on the rear side of the transmission area, which there are none. So from this point, everything is fine and we move back down to the bottom area. Next item we check is the forward section of the engine and the accessory gearbox. Now you would normally do this coming down from looking at the main road ahead. You would stay either on the boot floor or in the footsteps. To give you a better look of what I'm looking at, we're going to use a set of steps. Now you also wouldn't open this panel, we're going to open it so that you can see exactly what I'm looking at, make it a bit more visible. So the first item to check, forward bulkhead, just checking for condition, looks great. Moving downwards, we check the rear end of the K-Flex drive shaft, exactly the same as we did in the transmission area. We're looking at the plates, the nuts and bolts, the integrity, the witness marks. Moving forward. We look at the rotor brake, the disc assembly, the calipers, there's two. We check the brake pads to see that there's uh, enough meat on them. We then look at the freewheel area. We're checking for any oil leaks. We look to the bottom of the engine deck, again looking for oil leaks. While we're in the bottom, we look at the engine mount on this side. We check the three mounting points for integrity. Coming upwards, we check the starter. This is the starter generator here. We check the integrity of the hardware. Then what you would normally check is on the top here, we have two bypasses, one for the oil system, one for the fuel system. You'll see in the inset a picture of those now, and it shows that they both have the red pins retracted, which means the filters are not bypassing. When we're happy here, we move rearwards to the inlet barrier filter. What we're checking in here is, did we pick up any straw, grass, debris from an offsite landing? And everything here looks good. We're now going to check the turbine section of the engine. Again, you don't need to open this panel for this part of the check. But we're going to open it just so you get a, a better sight. <coughs> we're checking the drive shaft of the tail rotor. We're checking the witness marks, the hardware, check everything's in place. 
We're checking the rear section of the turbine. We're looking for any discoloration, any sooting, any fuel leaks, any oil leaks, any chafing. We check the exhaust section. Again, we're looking for integrity, cracks. Moving forward, we check the bulkhead. We check all the connectors, the fuel lines and the oil lines to check that there is no leakage. We check the rear engine mount on the section here. Check the three mounting points that all the integrity is good. And we have a good look in the bottom of the engine well to check we have no oil puddling. One of the only panels we do have to open on this aircraft is this one here. What we're looking for in here is the circuit breaker panel and we're going to check the truss frame and to the bottom of the transmission area. Okay, what we're looking for in here, we check the circuit breaker panel, all the circuit breakers are in. We check the battery, it's a lithium ion battery, huge amount of power. We check down the bottom of this part of the panel to check for any oil leaks, any chafing. You can see there are none. A lot of electrical connections in this part of the airframe. Certainly looking back, we've got all our boxes. So we check that the integrity of those is good. Plugs are all in. And then we want to be looking at the bottom side of the transmission area. What we're looking up on through here now, we're looking at the bottom side of the transmission, bottom side of the live mounts. We're looking at the engine tray itself, looking for any leaks. We're looking at the all of the wiring and pipes to check that integrity is good. And we're checking the rear side, bottom side of the transmission area. And everything looks absolutely fine. Next item to check is the exhaust can. You want to have a good look down there if you haven't had your covers on, you've been outside for instance. Two reasons, you can have a good look at the turbine as you can see in the inset now. And also you can check that there's nothing in there. As we keep talking about birds, they do like to uh, nest in the most bizarre places. We then check the mounting points for the tail boom, these two here. We check the doublers for the tail boom to check for any cracks or delamination. We look down the skin of the tail boom, look down the side skin, but also look down the rear of the skin. Just have a really good look that it's all as it should be. We check the tail rudder drive shaft cover. These are the securing points here and you'll note that they all point the same way, which makes checking them for security really easy. Moving downwards towards the horizontal stabiliser. We check the leading edge, we check for hangar rash, we check for bird damage. Also take time to check underneath. There's four mounting points here, so we check the integrity of those bolts and the witness marks. Moving up, there's two more bolts here. We check the witness marks of these bolts. We check the earth connector and the electrical connector here for security, which they are. And then a general good look on the top skin for any damage. This all looks fine. We check the trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer, just checking for any damage, hangar rash mainly. We then continue to check the tail rotor drive shaft cover, again checking the fasteners all align the same direction. Moving down the tail boom to the leading edge of the fin. It's a large surface area of the fin, so a good check on the leading edge, checking for any damage. We can then check the side skin of the fin, checking for any damage. We check the four mounting points here, the witness marks on the side, and just check that everything is secure as it should be. Now at the rear of the 505, we check the trailing edge of the fin. Moving downwards, we've already checked the nav lights earlier on. Here's the rear nav light. Moving to the tail rotor gearbox, we check the oil level, security of the chip plug, check the pitch change mechanism, and we're looking for grease or oil that's moving around. This is a vent cap on the top. If there's too much oil in the tail rotor gearbox, it will vent through this cap and you'll see a misting on the tail rotor gearbox, which is a good sign or a bad sign that it's over full. Moving downwards, we check the tail damper. The only check for this is give it a good wiggle. It's secured by uh, steel ropes. Moving down the fin to the stinger, we check the stinger is straight and true. Just have a look on the bottom that it hasn't been dragged down the runway. That all looks good. Also just check the gap between the bump stop and the stinger that there is a clearance there. We're now at the tail rotor of the aircraft. So the first check we're going to do is inspect each blade. So we check the skin of the blade, we check the leading edge, we check the reverse of the blade. We're looking for damage, anything that may have happened in the hangar or on the last flight. We check the trailing edge. We check the rivets here, these hold in a weight on the end of the blade, so you're just checking for any movement. 
which there is none, which is good. We then want to check the bearings, so we just very gently hold this blade over with one finger, two fingers on the bottom of this blade, just to see if there's any play, which there isn't. We now want to check this blade, so clearly we're going to turn the rotor, so you just want to make sure that you have adequate clearance, which we have checked. Very gentle when you turn it around, just one finger. Again, on this blade, we're checking this skin, we're checking this rivet line, leading edge, reverse of the blade, checking the rivets, trailing edge, and then we also want to check the bearings, same as on the first blade, so one finger, just two fingers on the end of the blade, everything is fine. We now want to check the tow rod assembly itself, so we check the output shaft, we're looking for any oil, anything that's leaking from the gearbox. Moving underneath the gearbox, we want to check the pitch change mechanism in here. Again, we're checking for integrity, bolts are in, split pins are in, which everything looks good. We then want to check the pitch links themselves. Way to do that, exactly the same as everything else, bit of pressure on one side, check the pitch link moves, check with two fingers for any movement, and we check the other side, free to move, checking for any play. We check the balance weight wheel, the knurled nut for wire locking, which it is, and the general condition of the, the assembly itself, which all the bolts, hardware is all exactly as it should be, so the tail rider looks good. Moving forward, check tail rider drive shaft cover. Again, we check the fasteners, are all aligned the same way. Again, check down the skin, check under the skin, come along forward, trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer, and again, we want to have a look under the skin, check everything is good. Two mounting points here, check the witness marks are good. Moving up, top skin of the horizontal stabilizer, again, we're looking for any kind of damage. Moving forward, we check the leading edge, all looks good. We check the two bolts here, the witness marks as we do on the other side. Then we move forward, checking the fixings again, are all pointing the same way, which they are all the way to the forward section, then the two extra mounting points here. Bolts of integrity are good, and that the doublers, there's no delamination or working rivets. Next area we're going to check, this is the oil cooler here. So we're checking for any damage. Because of the position of it being low to the ground, it's fairly protected, but just good to have a look at the fins, and again, any kind of leakage that may be coming from around it. We check the ELT antenna, the lower drains, and while we're down here, a good look at the cross tube to check that it's in the right condition. While we're down here, have a quick look at the rad out aerials and check for their integrity, they look fine. And then we move forward of the aircraft. Everything here is tickety-boo. We check this side of the turbine section. We've already checked for oil leaks in the bottom of the pan, so we don't need to repeat that. But it's just a good visual on the oil lines, the fuel lines. And this side of the turbine section, just to check everything looks as it should. And this looks absolutely fine. This side of the inlet barrier filter, again, you're just looking for any kind of debris. We've already checked the top side of the filter from the other side, so we're just checking here. Moving forward to the port side of the accessory gearbox. Oil lines, fuel lines, electrical connections, any kind of leaks, chafing. As we can see, everything there exactly as it should be. Moving forward, we check the skins. Everything looks fine on those. And our next observation point is through here. And what we're checking in here, which you can see from the inset, is the hydraulic bypass filter. Again, on the red poppet, if there's no red leg, it isn't bypassing. And while you're here, always good just to have a good look. Bottom of the transmission area, the frame, retention system, just for, again, leaks, integrity, etc. Moving forward, this is our secondary door. We check the hardware to check it's secured properly, which it is. You can see the split pins are in. Moving forward, we check this side for the, cross, the uh, skid tube, checking for straightness, any kind of damage. Moving up to the transparencies, we check that they are okay, in good condition. The sliding window for integrity. Moving forward to the hinges, checking the hinge secured to the door and the door to the airframe with the pins. They are both good. And lastly, we look to the static vent this side, checking the pinhole is clear, which it is, which completes the pre-flight inspection.